My name is Betar Gallant. I'm an assistant professor in mechanical engineering, and my research group focuses on energy and gas conversion. So what that means is we're interested in future uh, technologies that are going to define and drive uh, energy storage and also greenhouse gas capture and conversion. And as much as possible, we like to explore the intersection between those two technologies. MIT places a strong emphasis on using technology, engineering, fundamental science, uh, research and development to try to tackle um, sustainability challenges. Uh, and that includes looking at carbon capture, that includes a whole host of technologies. There are a lot of uh, approaches currently being explored for what we can do to capture CO2, um, prevent it from being emitted to the environment, and in uh, sort of the ideal case, we would like to be able to recycle it or convert it to something valuable. So that can mean something that has utility for daily use, or it can mean something that has economic value. Um, for example, uh, in the best case, both of those metrics would be achieved. We could take CO2 and make something useful like a fuel and thereby close the carbon cycle. So rather than having to take carbon or CO2 uh, precursors out of the earth in the form of oil and gas, uh, we could instead synthesize our own fuels from CO2 uh, and then we could uh, use that with our existing transportation infrastructure and um, uh, power infrastructures and uh, capture the CO2 and go back and forth. And so thereby one could close the loop. The challenge with doing this uh, is there's uh, quite high energy penalties and also selectivity challenges in both capturing the CO2 and converting it to a product. Well, my background is uh, metal gas batteries, metal gas electrochemical technologies. So probably the most widely known example of that technology is what's called a lithium air or lithium oxygen battery. During my previous research as a PhD student, I actually studied the mechanisms by which uh, lithium can react with a gas and convert it to a solid phase. And so when I began uh, my, my new group's efforts here, I asked the question, how can we translate the knowledge that has emerged in that field over the last 10 years towards addressing um, not only energy storage and battery type challenges, um, but also towards uh, targeting environmental challenges. And I saw an opportunity to um, take that knowledge and apply it towards developing new technologies that could capture a gas and where we could design the reaction around uh, essentially taking the gas from its problematic contaminant state to a somewhat deconstructed material that we could then um, dispose of cleanly and safely. So what we learned is that when we pair what we call the gas cathode, so this is the reaction where the gas is actually reacting and forming a solid, when we pair that gas cathode with, for example, a lithium anode, uh, we can form a primary battery. So the advantage is while we're converting the gas to something less harmful, for example, a perfluorinated gas might convert to uh, largely lithium fluoride, a solid material. While that reaction is occurring, we can also extract energy out of the reaction, meaning um, it's a downhill or exothermic reaction. We let the battery simply discharge. We can get about 2.2, 2.3 volts out of the process, and it operates up to a fairly long uh, lifetime or what we call capacity. So we can um, think about developing a system that captures the gas. It can output a voltage uh, either as a sensor type application or it can actually uh, provide power back to the, um, the plant or the process uh, where these gases are being used.